God, we thank you so much for your love. Lord, we ask that you be with us tonight. Let us be in your will and your way. Let your thoughts be our thoughts, and what we do and say reflect you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture tonight is from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4-5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible, not Bible study, worship. Thank you for joining us for worship. Uh, and right off the bat, I have a couple prayer requests. Uh, we have an urgent request for John Coulter. He'll be going in for lung surgery tomorrow. And I'm asking you to pray not only for his surgeons, but for the entire staff. And then don't forget to pray for John as he heals up. We also want to send out a prayer for Katie down in Texas. Katie, if you're watching, we're praying for you. That fourth verse that my wife read says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down, like pulling the blocks off the side of a castle. Pulling down. The weapons we find in the scriptures are not the weapons of the world. In fact, they're the opposite. We use divine power to demolish strongholds. We use divine power to demolish arguments and every battle that sets itself against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now I have a confession to make. I know just about enough about computers to make me dangerous around them. I do a lot of things and I feel good about it, but sometimes I mess things all up. And many years ago when I went back to school, I discovered that computers were important. In fact, you had to do your work on a computer, you had to turn your stuff in on a computer, and I looked at the other students and they were, they were way ahead of me on computers. So I took some computer classes while I was taking other classes and trying to complete the classes at the same time. I was still writing stuff out on paper and trying to transfer it to the computer. It took me years but I caught up with them. And it's only been since computers became much more personal and a whole lot user-friendly that I've come to see them as helpful. And even then, I largely use my computer for word processing, emails, social media, and journals while I surf the internet. And whenever my computer goes bad or goes wrong, I always have to get my son-in-law, who's an IT guy, to work for me. But there was one thing I learned many, many years ago in those computer classes. It's an acronym. The acronym is G-I-G-O. Garbage in, garbage out. A computer and its program only functions as well as the code and the data. We put good information in, we will get good information out. If we put bad information in, eventually bad information is going to come out. Garbage in, garbage out. And these principles hold true in our life lessons as well. If we eat nothing but fast foods and junk food, our health is going to be poor. If all we think about are dark things and impure thoughts, our minds are going to become clouded and distracted. And if, we think about this, if we don't guard our hearts, we won't be able to love fully and we won't be able to fully be loved. If we don't properly tend our souls, we won't have the depth of faith necessary to live with hope each day. If we put garbage in, we will eventually get garbage out. 
And the Apostle Paul was aware of this principle, whether he knew it was called garbage in and garbage out. In his second letter to the Corinthians, he writes to, to Christians in an ancient city of Corinth, and he addresses this subject of garbage in and garbage out, to some of the issues that they were suffering through in that church. And towards the end of the letter, he prepares them for spiritual war with the world, which would fill their bodies and minds and hearts and souls with its garbage. He reminds them of one of the greatest spiritual weapons available to us is to take every thought captive and make them obedient to Christ. Friends, we may think we're at war with this virus that's going around. We may think that we have problems with riots, but we're battling another war, a much serious war for us, and it's being waged for our bodies, our minds, our hearts, and our souls. And we need to follow Paul's advice to help us guard against ourselves so we don't compromise even if it's even if it's through this time of sheltering into ourselves or maybe avoiding cities and stuff. We've got to get out of this symptom. For example, take what you put in your body captive. Eat healthy. Eat balanced. Avoid snacking too much. Take a walk. Set a daily schedule and get your sleep. Don't allow yourself to put on any more COVID-19 pounds that this recent lifestyle has had you do. Take every thought that comes to your mind captive. Fill your mind with healthy stuff. Read your Bible, a devotional. Limit the amount of news and social media that you put yourself in front of. Do wholesome movies and TV shows. And by all means, don't become cynical. Guard your heart and take it captive. Allow yourself to feel. Expose your emotions if you need. And don't need just telling people you're fine when you know you're not fine. You need to remember that fine is a four-letter F word. It's not good. Sometimes you need to tell someone how you're feeling. Tend your soul. Take it captive. Participate in worship with us, especially we can worship with you. Pray as often as you need. Read the Word of God. Meet with and encourage others, even if it's virtually. Leave, live generously. Be a servant. And share about God's love every day. The best way to prevent garbage in, garbage out from being the result of this season is take every bite, every thought, every emotion, every habit captive and make it obedient to Christ. I'm praying that when we come out of this, on the other end, we'll be healthier in every area of our lives and deeper in love with Jesus Christ. What strongholds do you need to pull down? With God's help, we can knock down those walls. There isn't anything that we can't do without the Lord's help. Let's pull them down. We can take captive and win. Will you join me in this prayer? We're going to pray here in a little bit, but right now we're going to have a closing hymn from Mitch Marhanga. <laughs>
Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. Lord, help us to take everything captive, which gets in our way to you. Lord, help us pull down walls that separate us. Help us to keep some of the things that we've learned during this time, over the weeks. And more than anything, help us to stay connected and close to you. When we do, we will find freedom. And Lord, I pray this in your name. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. And I ask you to come and join us again next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning Central Time. Next Sunday, we will be sharing communion. So I would encourage you to bring a piece of bread or a cracker and some grape juice or a substitute with you, and we will share communion with you. Again, that's Sunday at 10 o'clock Central Time, and we hope you'll join us. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost.